I will start while it's um, warming up. So I'm going to talk today about a project I did for my digital humanities coursework, um, which is part of my archaeology PhD, which is on Pacific pottery. So I really want to stress two points and from this presentation. And one is to get people thinking about if they have models, 3D models, how they could make, turn them into fun, interactive websites, preferably in virtual reality. And also to introduce the 3JS uh, JavaScript library, which does make it relatively easy to use models on a website, including virtual reality websites. And we're making lots of 3D models in cultural heritage, down from, from tiny seeds to coins to whole villages. And we make them with LiDAR, photogrammetry, computer-assisted design, and there's one more that I've forgotten, sorry. Um, and we use them for reference collections and archiving, but we also, for engagement, use them. We print, make models of them, and we use them in games, including virtual reality games. And when I talk about virtual reality, I'm talking about headsets like the Quest, where you have a headset where you can be immersed in a 3D world, and you have controllers where you can manipulate models and move them about. And some museums, like the Florida Museum, have created apps where you can move and play with their fossils. And there are commercial apps which have 3D puzzles, which have a lot of cultural heritage models. And I think that this would be a really good way to get people interested in cultural heritage. And so you have apps which you can download to the headset, but you can also browse the web in a headset. So having websites that have games or interactive models is a really easy way for a user to experience um, a game because they don't have to download it and have that time constraint and investment. So uh, yeah, I think web-based delivery sort of increases the likelihood of usage. And you can find some examples um, of openly available code and um, an application where you can turn a model into a simple 3D jigsaw puzzle and play it in virtual reality. And as I said, the 3JS JavaScript library has, is a JavaScript library that has lots of demonstrations and examples on its page. And I use two of these example codes, one for model loading and the other for virtual reality um, interactions to just create a simple application where I took a pot that had broken, I took the various pieces, scanned them in, and the user can go into this website, pick up the pieces of the pot, and try and put the pot together. And this is meant to engage the person in being interested about the pottery of Papua New Guinea. And around the immersive scene are photos of this pot being made. And it's, I, we published on this pot being made, and this is meant to be a way that interests the viewer in the, the procedure. So photo, sorry if you can press play. Photogrammetry, um, the models are made of uh, meshes of polygons with an image texture over them. And you, with virtual reality especially, you do have to reduce the number of polygons that you're using. So it is very memory hungry. So you really do have to, um, yes, reduce your, um, your number polygons. So I just scanned the pieces of this pot in, in with a Polycam a iPhone for, um, application. So they're not archival quality, but they're good enough for games. And so if you can press play. So this is the app that when you are immersed in this virtual world via a web browser. And you can pick the pieces up from the floor and then you just start playing around and trying to assemble the pot and you can see around uh, pictures of the pot being made. So people become interested and they look at how the pot's made. 
It is annoying the physics are really bad, so the pieces will overlap, which is something I would like to work on and try and make better. Um, so yes, so in conclusion, so you can use iPhone apps like Polycam um, just to make simple models, not archival quality of archaeological artifacts, especially before you glue them together, um, would be really good. Um, you do have to decrease the number of polygons, especially in virtual reality. It's very um, fussy about your model size. It likes GLB models if you're doing that. Um, and then, yes, I'd like people to investigate 3JS. It's, uh, I didn't know JavaScript programming before I started using it, so it's a lot easier than using a game engine. Um, and you can make very simple puzzles like this one, or also on our website, we have other ones where you match the pot to where it comes from in Papua New Guinea, which is a bit more complex. Um, but yeah, it's a really relatively easy way for people to start taking their models that they're using in research and turning them into relatively simple, you know, not really fancy commercially um, ones, but yeah, just simple websites to get people interacting with your research so that it's not stuck in some academic journal. Thank you.